February, I bought a rally car. A very cheap rally car. The idea was to compete in a few events this year with my friend Dan, another motoring writer bloke. We're both going to co-drive for each other. And this is the story of our first test day. I suppose this is also the story of real-life motorsport. How we went from this, via lots of this, to get to this. Real motorsport, real nonsense. The process didn't start well. I borrowed a trailer, hit a rock, got a puncture and couldn't find a replacement. When I say special order, I mean, it's not a 335-20P0. The next problem was my knackered old Range Rover. The cooling fan was chewing 30 amp fuses like wine gums, so we needed to steal a few from the rally car. Right, we should have a fan now. 3.9 litre V8 with about 8 horsepower. I'm not sure it'll start though, it didn't last night. There she goes! <laughs> and with that, we were ready for the off with hope in our hearts and the promise of cheap oversteer on the horizon. Neil was shooting, I was driving, Dan was wearing completely inappropriate clothing for a gravel test, and his friend Adam had modelled his hair on a Noel Edmonds swap shop poster. But the drive with the lads is always the very best bit, so we set the compass and began with an earnest discussion on the intricacies of ZZ Top lyrics. You didn't have to hold it, but, but you, you did. did. But you did, and I thank you. What a band. Those soaring spirits dipped about 20 minutes later when we found out that I hadn't punctured one tyre, I'd punctured two. The tyre weld was about to spring into action when the Range Rover immobilised itself. The newly functioning Kenlo fans drained the battery and we started begging strangers for a jump start. Sadly the cables weren't long enough to reach a sprinter van and this transit driver thought I was about to rob him and scarpered. So it was left to a kind couple in a Picasso to save the day. But now we had a dilemma. Leave the engine running and risk a fuse blowing and an overheat, or shut it off and risk it not starting again. But luckily, another blown tyre distracted us from the agony of that particular choice, and by the time we'd reached Phil Price's, we were looking especially ragged. With the Range Rover knackered, the trailer double knackered, would the BMW actually start? The one. We've still got two service lights on there. <laughs> what do you reckon? This is the business. There it is. I thought it was about 150 horsepower, but I'm, I'm led to believe it's 170 horsepower. No idea what the torque figure is. It's got some fluid in it now. Um, we'll have a look at the dipper. Uh, so we finally made it to Phil Price Rally School um, in the middle of Wales, not far from Radnor Forest, and Typically for Wales, it's absolutely lashing with rain, but I don't mind because the rally car's there. You turn the key, it starts. The power steering sounds like there's a small mammal living in it somewhere. Um, the Range Rover's half dead. I mean, the kit is ruined, but then it was shagged before we started, and that's the whole point of this budget rallying exercise. It's a crash helmet that I last wore in 2005 and has been in the shed ever since. Record that? Drek and Sebastian Loeb does this mops the mould out of his old crash helmet before he puts it on. Booties. Booties. Which is the three liter cover. Yeah. yeah. Rally. <laughs> the three two five rally car. Here we come. Purchased for four thousand pounds. I know it looked a bit of a flea pit for that, but that gives us a car ready to go, ready to be used on days like this. 
and in the championship. But do you know what? We're having so much fun today that sometimes you wonder whether actually you do need to go and do a championship. Just come out in your four grand car, spend a few hundred quid renting full prices for the day, just come and go sideways and feel the car move around, have some fun. <laughs> Anyhow, I got very knackered old tyres on the back. It's very slippery and it's just perfect. It's where I want to be, it's what I want to be doing. This is the E30 BMW 325i rally car. Well, that's what the bloke who sold it to me called it anyway, and there's no reason to doubt his description, I don't think. It came with a few wheels, tyres, broken components, and, reputedly, a spare 2.7 Alpina block. All that mattered to me was it was rear-wheel drive. There's a little series for E30s in the UK. It's run by Pat Flynn, and one of the championship rules is that extra points are awarded for the most sideways moment on a specific corner of each event. This clearly makes it the finest motorsport championship event on the global calendar. As for the spec, well, standard engine, spec suspension and tyres, standard gear ratios, a locking diff, the usual smattering of safety gubbins, and away you go. I love the fact that when I bought it, the last owner admitted it had led quite an interesting life, and then sent me photos of the one real biggie it had suffered. The old girl's been in a shed for the last three months because we bought it and then did nothing with it. And now, we got it out. So, 170 horsepower, what does it weigh? I've no idea, it must be about 1250, 1300 kilograms I suppose. Tell you what, on this kind of damp gravel it feels plenty fast enough for me. the best £4,000 I've ever spent in my life. <laughs> it's mine as well! The big gap between second and third, that's about the hoodie sort of serious technical issue. I mean, it's big and it's loose, but it's rear wheel drive, so who cares? <laughs> the temptation to see just how much speed and angle you can carry is always strong, and it usually leads to the inevitable. So, here's the inevitable. See those crisscross lines and that large drop to the left? Yeah, my clenched buttocks did too. It won't surprise you to learn that the post-test euphoria was short-lived. We loaded up, amazed that the little 325 literally turned on a key, took a day thrashing and didn't miss a beat. Then we got another puncture. It's what people call grassroots motorsport. People say it's great fun. Well, I'll throw the dice, this. This one goes. Yeah. I'll just torch the car then, we'll yeah? Just leave the car. Sorry? Not. Just taking the car and driven it, or is it not taxed? It's not taxed. Doesn't look like a rally car, does it? I think you'd probably get stopped if you were drove through Monmouth like this. The irony of today is that the silent person behind me wearing these Scandinavian headgear is actually Adam Gould. 
and he's a proper rally driver. But he's also best mates with Dan, so he just came along for the crack. And all he's done today really is change tyres on hard shoulders and ask truckers if we can jumpstart our car from their battery. Adam, what do you reckon of what you've seen today? <laughs> <laughs> the whole thing's been a shambles. <laughs> to what it's all about, you get in a cheap Range Rover, put a trailer on the back and explode some tyres and then take your cheap racing car or rally car to fill prices. And that's what it's all about. And if you offer me the chance to go in a Cayenne Turbo Press car with a brand new trailer, I'd do it every single time. I'm never doing this again. It's been an absolute <laughs> pain in the ass, to be honest with you.